Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about event-driven home automation. Now, if you're new to the channel or if you're unfamiliar with the concept, event-driven home automation is the type of home automation that makes your house actually feel smart and less like a house that just has a bunch of internet connected devices that you can toggle by an app. Event-driven home automation is the concept of your smart home responding to external triggers or sensor data to, to curate the environment for you rather than you having to ask it to turn on music when you get home, it responds to your car coming in the driveway and turns on your Sonos. Or instead of having to turn on or ask Google to turn on your bedroom lights when you're getting up in the morning, it senses that your phone gets unplugged from the charger and turns on the lights all the way to your car or something like that. It allows your home automation system to get out of your way and just provide you with the simple automatic experiences that actually make our lives more efficient. So what we're going to be looking at today is I'm going to use a Sonoff S31 module to automatically curate the lighting in my home theater space um, when I use my home theater projector. So if you're unfamiliar with the Sonoff S31, please check out the last video I, I put up, um, one where I use an S31 to create automatic alerts when my washing uh, cycle is finished. That's going to kind of be a prerequisite to this because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on setting up the S31. If you have seen that already, Perfect. Uh, we'll kind of pick up from there. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be monitoring the power state of my home theater projector uh, in order to determine when it's on and when the, uh, you know, the, the global lighting in the basement or home theater space should be off. And we're also going to be using some data that I pull from uh, the Chromecast that's hooked up to my home theater so we can tell when uh, content is being played and when it's not being played when it's finished. So we'll be using all that to, uh, to set the lighting modes and set the lighting scenes in uh, the home theater space. So let's get started. As you can see here, I've got my S31 uh, set up. I've turned on the projector so I can get kind of a baseline of what it looks like when it's on, 184 watts. Uh, that's what we'll be using. I'll, I'll give it a range between 180 and 190 or something like that to determine whether or not the projector's on. I've already gone ahead and created a new sensor in Home Assistant. And this isn't gonna be monitoring, this isn't the sensor that's gonna be monitoring the power usage. Uh, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do all that from the uh, node red backend. This is just a dummy sensor that we will set the state of the projector uh, from node red so that Home Assistant is aware when the projector is on or off. One thing that I want to do while I have the sun off uh, firmware web page up here is I want to make this sensor a, a little more sensitive. I want it to send MQTT messages as soon as it determines that the power is probably on. So I'm going to go to console and in the console, I'm going to enter a command. Now, these, these commands come from the Tasmoda firmware wiki. And what we're going to do here is we're going to enable additional MQTT messages get sent when a certain uh, percent power change occurs. So when we go from, you know, 1 watt to 20 watts or from 20 watts to 150 watts, I want to I want to send an additional message there and not just wait for the, uh, the logging interval to elapse. And that'll allow us to start processing logic as soon as the projector turns on. So to do that, I'm going to use the power delta command and the power high and low command. So in power delta, I'm going to enable reporting on power change. and I'm going to set it so that it reports whenever there's a 50% change in power. So I'll say power delta. First, I'll set it to on. And then I'll set power delta to uh, 20, 50% change. And I'm going to say power high. I want it to tell me whenever it goes over 150 watts. And power low. Oh. I want it to tell me whenever it goes below 10 watts. Okay, so that'll give us the MQTT resolution we need to achieve this in you know near real time. Uh, so let's go to Node Red and start working on the logic. So now that we're in Node Red, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, pick up some of that MQTT data from the uh, Sonoff that we just configured, and we'll double check the topic that it's publishing to. So it's publishing to devices, S31 projector, and then sensor. Copy that. We'll put that into our node red MQTT node, QS to one, we'll say done. So we're going to borrow some of the parsing nodes that we created uh, last time uh, during the last video. And basically what these are going to do for us is they are going to parse out just the power value, just the wattage value that we want uh, to act upon. This 
MQTT message is loaded with a lot of additional details that we're not going to be using at, at this time. So we can see that here. It's uh, into the energy field. It's got, you know, uh, yesterday and today's totals, uh, period, the power, the apparent power, the react power, yada, yada, yada. All these different values we're not going to use. We're only going to be using the power value here, which is currently at 30 because the, the projector has gone into standby mode. So this is basically just going to look at that, look at that message dot payload, convert it into an object, and then and then the change node here is just going to isolate the payload dot energy dot power portion of that object and make it the default payload. So we can just work with that. So we'll take this into a switch node so that we can update Home Assistant when the projector is in different states. So I'm going to say when it is between 150 or actually we'll, we'll, we'll say 160 and 190 it is on and when it is between 20 and 40 it's in standby and we'll say that when it is less than or equal to 19 it is off. Let's get down to that and we'll use a change node to alter the message text for our home assistant sensor. Set message.payload to off. We'll call this off. Copy this. Make one for standby. Call it standby. And we'll create another one and call it on. Okay. Connect these up to our switch node here. And we'll make sure it publishes to the MQTT endpoint where the sensor or the home assistant sensor is listening. And we'll just double check that really quick. It's listening on devices, HT projector state. Copy it. Paste that in here. QoS1. Done. Pipe these all in. Deploy. Okay, now let's check our sensor. Okay, so here it is here. We have our project, HD projector sensor. It can see that it is in standby mode, uh, just like we would expect. I'm going to go ahead and hit a button on the remote and see if we can't get it to update. Okay, we can see that it just switched to on. As soon as the light bulb turned back on and the power value went up, we... We got an on message over MQTT from our node red logic. So that seems to all be working properly. I'll go ahead and turn the projector off and we'll continue. And we can see that right away we got an update and it's now off. Okay, so back in node red. Um, what I want to do is I want to trigger a scene for when I start watching uh, movies on my home theater projector. So right now I don't have a, you know, watching TV scene for my home theater. So I'll quickly whip one together. We'll use some home assistant nodes to turn off some lights and dim some others. So um, in my node red setup, I have a section called manual controls. And that's super handy because not only do you get, you know, uh, injection node manual controls, but you can come here and you can grab elements that you may need for other parts of your project without having to actually write and reconfigure them. So I'm going to grab theater snack lights on off and basement stair lights on off for now. I don't know if I'll be using them all, but I'll just grab them so that I have them handy. And these are kind of the uh, nodes. These are the uh, devices that are in and around my home theater setup that we're going to be toggling. So put those there for now. What I want to do when I first start watching a movie is I want to have the stair lights turn off. So I'll use that as is. And I want to have the snack lights on dim. So I'll grab this and I'll edit its data a little bit and I'll make the brightness, let's call it 10. See what it looks like with 10. Done. I just want to give this a quick test to see what that looks like if it's the right dimness. Deploy. Oh yeah, that dimmed them right down, okay. Perfect. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got kind of a mini scene here that we're going to be using 
just when we turn the projector on. So when we turn the projector on, uh, it, my home theater is in the basement, so we're turning the stair lights off uh, to remove any um, light leak into the room and we're going to turn the snack lights which are just little dome lights above the couch we're going to turn them on at a low brightness uh, just for a little bit while people find their seats and you know open their snacks and whatnot and get ready to watch once the movie or once the movie or tv show or whatever uh comes on and and we're watching it we kind of want to fade those lights out after a period of time too to kind of increase the the viewing experience especially since we won't need the additional light because the projector screen will kind of bounce light back into the room in order to determine whether or not we're watching content, I'm going to use uh, some information that we're going to pull from the Chromecast that's in the home theater. So there's the first scene. There's the second scene. We're going to turn this from on to off. Change the name so that we know what's going on. Done. We won't need these, I guess. Well. We'll pull these aside for now. We won't need them right yet. Okay, so the first thing we want is we want to have a one-time action when the projector goes from off or standby to on. So, so we'll grab a state change node, and we're going to be looking for sensor.ht underscore projector. Copy that. Okay, and we'll call this projector state. We'll leave that. So after the state change node, we want to determine what state the projector is now in. So I'll paste a switch node that I have handy here, and this is just going to parse out the state from the state change node, off, standby, or on, as we know. And we're gonna use a trick we used in the last video, or to leverage part of the message that comes out of a state change node, where Home Assistant also adds in the previous state. Uh, so not only will a state change node report on this current state that the node is in, but it will also report on the state that the node has changed from. And so that's in a part of the message data called message.data.old underscore state and then dot state. So we're gonna grab, a, grab that snippet from our last week's example. And I'm going to use a switch node to make sure that we're going from a standby or off state to an on state. So the switch node is going to say previous state. And we're going to be parsing out that data field that we copied. And we want it to equal standby or this will isolate this event so that it only happens when the projector is turned on for the first time, when it changes state from off to on or from standby to on. So say done to that, we want to grab the on message from this guy, we want to put that in there, and we want to trigger this mini little scene from either of these two states. So just to simplify this, I'm just going to throw in a function node that's not going to do anything except pass on the message. just so that we have a single point to start this scene from. So we'll say both of you guys flow into there. And again, this function node doesn't do anything to the message. It just passes it on directly. And we're going to do this. We're gonna make that start this scene. So there we go. When the projector first comes on, it will set the basement lighting into this mode. So the second thing that we decided we wanted to do was act upon when the content begins to be played. So once people have their seats and the actual movie or TV show starts, then we're gonna dim the rest of the lights. We're gonna turn all the lights in the basement off. And that's this secondary scene here. So we're gonna leave this flow as is because this flow is, is working properly and it's gonna do what we want it to do. And we're gonna set up a second flow that's centered around the media player uh, actually beginning to play. So the media player in this case is gonna be my Chromecast, but in your case, it might be your smart TV, it might be something else. So we'll grab another event state, or event, uh, no, sorry, we'll grab another state change node, and we'll say media player dot, oh, I forget what that media player is called, so I'll quickly go back to Home Assistant here, and we'll say media player, uh, 
mediaplayer.home underscore theater. That's the Chromecast that's downstairs. Home theater. And we'll call this Home Theater Chromecast. So when a Chromecast begins playing content, it goes from off or not playing to playing. So we're going to put that into a switch node. We're going to say if the payload is playing, okay. if the payload is playing, so this switch node will determine if the Chromecast is playing. The next thing that we need to determine is is the projector on. So we'll use the current state node and we'll select for sensor ht projector. So I've done to that. Call this uh, projector state. Done. And if the projector is on, then we're going to do the exact same thing here with a function node. We're going to grab, just grab a function node to act as a message relay. So that we can start that mini scene. Okay, and there we go. We'll deploy that. And with any good fortune, that should work. So, okay, so I'll just walk through this one more time and then I will uh, set a camera up in the home theater and we can see it in action. So we're watching the projector state to see when the projector turns on. When it turns on, we're turning off the stair lights and we're turning on uh, the over the couch lights so that people can have a seat and uh, you know get their snacks ready and everything else. And that's where that flow ends. The second, the second automation flow we have is when the home theater Chromecast starts playing content, we're gonna check and see if the projector state is on. If it is on, then we will complete the scene by turning the over couch lights off and having the room ready to play the content. So those are the two flows. Uh, it's nice having them independent uh, so that this flow can execute to completion with no dependencies. It's not sitting there waiting and pulling on a Chromecast to see if it eventually goes into playing state. This flow completely ends. And if down the road, the Chromecast goes into a playing state while the projector is on, it'll move into the next scene you know, seamlessly without any kind of additional complexities inside this flow. So I'm gonna set up a camera now and I will go through the motions of turning the projector on so we can see this automation in action. Okay, so we can see here that the projector is off and the basement lights by the stairs and the over couch lights are on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the projector now and we'll watch this automation flow. So the projector bulb's coming on now. It's warming up. And we can see the stair lights have gone off and the over couch lights have dimmed down to a low level. So I don't know if you can see the dimming on your side, but it has gone quite low. I know this camera probably is gonna adjust for brightness. So now I'm going to go ahead and start playing some content on the Chromecast. That's the input that the projector is uh, shooting at the screen right now. And we should see the couch lights go off once that content begins to play. Okay, so the Chromecast has started playing just now. And the lights have gone off, so the automation seems to be working. So just there we were able to see exactly how this flow uh, played out in the real world. Um, I would probably uh, continue building and, and add uh, some automation so that so when the Chromecast goes from playing to not playing, it turns the overhead lights back on and when the projector turns off, it turns the stair lights uh, back on. But I think that's pretty self-explanatory given all the work we've done today. Um, if you like this video, give a thumbs up, give a subscribe. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.